And so that brings us to the end. Uh, I'll just few, say a few words and then we'll, we'll conclude. Um, so I'd just like to start by saying thank you to uh, Radu and to Wendy and to Lisa for their support of this workshop. Uh, Kenzie Ontario and, and Monica uh, in particular uh, provided um, direct financial support uh, which allowed us to involve the undergraduates and I think we all agree that they did a fantastic job and that's something we need to encourage more of. I'd also like to thank Amy Farrow for her help in all aspects of, of putting together this conference. And thanks very much, Amy. We've seen a wide variety of talks in the workshop and I'd like to thank the presenters once again, as, as Nancy sort of alluded to, it takes an enormous amount of effort to put these talks together even in the best of times and we're certainly not in the best of times. But one thing it does make me sort of think about is how much knowledge was left in the basements of Hyatt's and Marriott's in random small towns where we used to fly thousands of kilometers and spend thousands of dollars to give talks to five people, or at least that's what I used to do. Uh, and this shift to recording and sharing these talks and the benefits that they bring is something that I think we need to ensure happens, uh, even though we're certainly gonna go back to in-person presentations and conferences. I think we need to ensure that we allow um, access to the extent possible in what are hopefully soon post-pandemic times. Another thing that made me that it made me think about was how we can make changes. And perhaps for a perhaps for a long time we just accepted that things were the way they are. Uh, but we probably don't need to stick with that. Uh, the dominance of the top journals is I think changing. Uh, we saw Annie's talk on the rise of preprints um, repositories and Wishdown was sort of able to, to, to critique a, one of, a, to, a top paper uh, very easily and, and very much anybody could do that. Anybody from an undergraduate through to a university professor can make contributions. There's a lot of free um, data. Come on. There's a lot of data that's freely available and a lot of statistical resources that are also free. <laughs> and um, I think that's something that needs to be embraced and those of us who are in positions of relative privilege um, perhaps need to think about how we can share our resources um, especially when there's no or, or very low costs um, such as just live streaming things or whatever what have you uh, turning to a slightly different topic, we all saw what happened in psychology, where essentially we pretty much don't trust much in that discipline anymore. But one of the interesting things is that um, this created a whole bunch of really exciting researchers in that discipline, and the future seems very positive. As I was searching for speakers, uh, there was just really strong ones in, in psychology, and I had to actively look outside of, of that field because there's so much interesting research being done there. The area of my own PhD economics, uh, for instance, did not go through that sort of fire and ashes process. Uh, but when you look at the current state, it's hard not to think that it might actually be in a similar state to, to psychology. Um, and it perhaps is just not acknowledged. And I don't think that we need careers and fields to be destroyed to see changes. Even though we're just a small group, there's 45 of us right now, plus another seven or eight on the, on the live stream. Uh, I think the presentations that we saw over the past two days um, really gave me some hope that we're teaching people in a better way than, than most of us were ever taught or certainly than I was, than I was taught. Uh, I had wanted a roughly even split between teaching. There, there were three streams. Um, I, and I wanted a roughly even split between teaching practices and evaluation. And I was a little disappointed that I thought that I didn't accomplish that. Uh, but I think that sitting through the talks, um, actually almost all of the practices talks and, and that ended up dominating were actually teaching talks in disguise. So for instance, we saw um, Charlotte's talk, for instance, was a, was a practices talk, but it was actually a teaching talk. And I think many of us who are teaching this term will immediately be using that video. And that was just one example that comes, comes immediately to mind. And while many of us would probably like to be remembered for the wonderful uh, theorems that we proved or the estimators that we established. Uh, the reality is that for probably most of us, it's 
our teaching that would have the most lasting effect. Uh, one of the things that the pandemic showed us was how horrible most of us are at thinking in terms of exponentials, boom, exponential growth. And while that had obviously a horrific effect in the case of the pandemic, uh, in the case of changing norms around how quantitative and statistical work is conducted, it's perhaps a reason for optimism because if each of us just say teach 10 students a year, um, and then each of them teach 10 students a year. It doesn't take very long before we actually look back and we see that we actually um, were part of a revolution. And that's certainly a cause for optimism. Uh, the other cause for optimism is, is, of course, this group, as Wendy pointed out at the start, uh, we're a bunch of folks from across a whole bunch of different countries. Even if I look at the participants right now, there's, there's a wide variety of countries. And we've got folks who are just starting their careers through to those who are right at the top of the discipline. And so I'm really looking forward to following up on the connections that we've established and whether that's just pos passively uh, following you on Twitter and liking your, your amazing work or uh, in the case of the undergrads and the grad students trying to provide you with the opportunities and then getting out of the way as you go and knock it out of the, knock it out of the park. So thank you very much for attending. We run a weekly session that you'd be welcome to sign up for if you're interested in this type of stuff. And the plan is to run a similar workshop with perhaps a slightly different focus, um, maybe in, in six months or so. So thank you very much for attending. And I hope that you have a lovely weekend. Thanks. Um, so I'm probably the oldest person on the screen. So I'll take it as my duty to, to propose a vote of thanks to Rohan for all the work. It's a lot of work to prepare a talk. We all know that, but it's much more work to prepare a conference. And so thank you very much, Rohan. You, I hope you sleep a lot this weekend. <laughs> and uh, thanks, uh, we, it's, it's spectacular what you've managed to do in difficult circumstances. Thank you very much, Nancy. It's lovely of you. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Oh, there's the baby. <laughs> <laughs>